the Olympics, the pinnacle of athletic achievement where dreams are realized and champions are made. But behind the glitz and glory lies a harsh reality for many athletes, financial struggles. Despite their dedication and talent, a significant number of Olympic athletes struggle to make ends meet. The US Olympic team roster for the 2024 Paris Games will include more than 500 athletes most of which will enter the competition in a financially precarious situation. Now, how much an American athlete can earn from participating in the Olympics varies wildly, depending to a large extent on the profile of the athlete's sport and the athlete themselves, as well as, of course, winning in their respective sports. Now, as with most sports, income is distributed like a pyramid, with the top 10% of athletes earning the majority of the income and 90% of athletes having to distribute whatever is left. As it pertains to American athletes and the Olympics, unless an athlete wins a medal, he or she will not be recompensed for competing at the games. A lot of folks assume that Olympic athletes across the board are paid at least enough to compete. The unfortunate truth though, is that this isn't the case in many instances. While athletes may earn little to no money for competing, they have a long list of expenses to prepare themselves for the games. The most costly usually being that of coaching, nutrition and recovery. Some estimates put these costs for high-performing athletes at over $100,000. Now, considering this disparity between income and outgoings, and the fact that outside of the UK and Singapore, most athletes are not paid to attend the Olympics, it's no surprise why so many athletes are broke. So, how exactly do athletes make money then? There are three main ways Olympic athletes can earn money. The first of which is through stipends. Athletes can receive stipends directly from the US Olympic and Paralympic Committee or from the groups that run the Olympic sports teams known as the national governing bodies. Some US weightlifters can receive up to $4,000 a month while a fencing bronze medalist, Monica Aksumitz, reportedly received a tiny $300 a month. This variation in income depends greatly on performance of the athlete and their ability to earn medals. The sport of the athletes will also determine the level of stipends an athlete can receive. In popular sports like swimming and gymnastics, athletes can receive more in stipend income. Knee sports tend to struggle in this department because they lack interest from the general public. Ultimately, sport is in the market of attracting eyeballs, and if a sport struggles to do this, it will generate less income. As a result, the athletes who compete in less popular sports bear the brunt of this reality. Now, the second way athletes make money is through sponsorships. In exchange for sporting a brand, an athlete can have their expenses covered by the brand. These sorts of arrangements, however, are usually reserved for the very best athletes and are typically performance-based. So winning will be required if you want to earn a large sum of money. For context, serial gold medalist Michael Phelps has earned over $75 million in sponsorship income. The vast majority of athletes, however, do not benefit from lucrative sponsorship deals. In fact, they may receive free gear and that's about it. Sponsorship income isn't just dependent on performance, it's also based on an athlete's public profile. If an athlete has managed to cultivate a large following and has a personal brand that can be leveraged by sponsors, then it's likely that brands will want to partner with said athlete. This is also true for entertainers, musicians, and athletes across the board. Being good at what you do may not translate into how popular you are. For context, David Beckham was never the best footballer in anybody's eyes, but he had a public profile which surpassed many of his peers. As brands look to get the highest return on investment from their sponsorships, they may lean toward sponsoring the more popular athletes, not the best one. Now, the third way athletes can earn is by winning prize money. Ultimately, athletes are competing to be number one, but also to be top of the income pyramid. In the US, there are pre-Olympic tournaments like the Diamond League Meets, which offers winners of competitions up to $10,000. The International Olympic Committee, or the IOC, doesn't award athletes money for medals, but some countries do. In fact, the IOC is very reluctant to share in the profits of the Olympics, as I've discussed in my video here. The US OPC has something called Operation Gold, which means that if you earn a medal at the Olympic Games, you'll receive prize money for that. 
For gold medalists, that means a bonus of $37,500. Silver medalists, $22,500. And bronze medalists, $15,000. We have to remember though, that these bonuses are one-time payments available every four years. So while it's better than nothing, it's certainly not enough for an athlete to live off. So what could be done to improve things for athletes? Firstly, I would say the IOC could distribute more money to athletes for competing and even more for winning. Let me know what you think about this concept down in the comments below. Secondly, I think more athletes should try to build a larger brand outside of their sport so that they can leverage their influence with potential sponsors. While this may be difficult for those who are less extroverted and just want to focus on their sport, it may be a necessary evil, if you will. Third, and a little bit more radical, athletes could scrap attending, decide to put on their own events and try to monetize said events themselves. This will require a complete rewiring of the brain and challenging of the status quo, something I'm sure nobody will do. Lastly, athletes can set up websites for people to donate to specific campaigns. Speaking of which, if you want to help the Olympic athletes overcome financial hurdles, consider donating to organizations that provide financial assistance and resources to athletes in need. And there you have it, a brief description as to why so many Olympic athletes are broke. If you like this video, please smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. As always, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.